My name is Francesco Petruccione. I grew up in Italy, in, uh, in Genoa. Five years ago, I was offered a professorship here at the University of Kozulunata. And since then, I'm here. Our job is twofold. First of all, you have to identify a problem. And then you have to switch on your brain yeah, and see how can I now contribute to solving the problem. Nobody tells you what, what you have to do. So you have, first of all, to look a little bit around and see what is it that could be a problem. And then you sit down and try to put together your, your theory or your experiment to try to explain how to solve this problem. Yeah, so let's go and see Abdul. But generally, people feel that optical fiber is very, very secure, uh, but it isn't. Uh, the, the piece of equipment like this, um, which you can buy off the shelf, is going to be used to tap into the optical fiber. All we're going to do is we're going to strip this wire, which we've done already. Okay, you can see that we're, we're down to the bare fiber here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to bend this fiber slightly. And when this fiber bends, it's going to leak out some of the light. And now, as soon as I put this down, you should see that the lights come on. You can notice that uh, we've basically got a video on... Uh, a, a video which is being streamed across the internet uh, be between two computers and what we've done is we've intercepted that uh, information just by tapping into the optical fiber. Um, and even if it is uh, encrypted, uh, people can still uh, get that encrypted information and try to decrypt it as well. You know that every year, every time you buy a new laptop, the processor is faster and uh, can do more fancy things. Yeah? And that is only because the chips inside become smaller, the connections are shorter and everything can go faster. Yeah? But now, in, in a few years' time, the, the, this process of miniaturization will be so small yeah, that uh, we will have to deal with single atoms within, <laughs> within your chip. Yeah? We will have kind of atom chips. Yeah? And the problem will be, that once we will be able to have these quantum computers on a reasonable scale, security like we know it today will not be guaranteed anymore. Yeah? Because these quantum computers will be able to crack your credit card number. Yeah? And that is a problem. <laughs> At an atomistic level, yeah? There are other laws that govern nature. Yeah, we can't use the, the, the good old the Newton laws of the apple that falls on your head. Yeah? If you go on the internet and buy a book at Kalahari or Amazon, yeah, at some stage you type in your credit card number. Yeah? In that moment, the information that you send, your credit card number, is encrypted so that uh, a bad person, you know, an eavesdropper, can't simply see the numbers that you're typing. But this is essentially the basic principle on which we rely for security. Most cities now have optical fiber networks yeah, so that you can connect two buildings from the city or the bank and your headquarters yeah, and that's all optical fiber. Yeah. So I was very, very pleased that the city was happy to, to support us yeah, because it means that, uh, that the city has also a vision of being uh, a kind of a high-tech city yeah, that encourages uh, high-tech development created in the city and even helps this development being adopted yeah, because in principle uh, the city is our first client if you want. We asked them whether we could use part of their network to test this technology in, in real life situations, yes, securing real, real life data. Yeah. And, uh, and the city <clears throat> liked the idea very much. They even sponsored us very generously. And we are in the process to setting up a network that connects essentially four buildings and secures the transfer of communication between these municipal buildings through quantum key distribution. Mm. 
My name is Poppy Simonyo. I'm a master's student here in the School of Physics at Westwood campus. After my honors, I got this opportunity to study here with um, the Quantum Research Group. And our task was to develop a single photon source that we um, gonna use to encode data for, for, for quantum key distribution. You have your, your laser, 532 nanometer laser coming down. You send it to the, to the diamond, it excites that NV center. And as it decays to the ground state, it gives off photons that you collect and send to, to detection. And those single photons can then be used to encode information. We are a new democracy. Before, many didn't really think it would benefit them if they took this. Um, you, you had to do something easy that you can finish quickly and come back and work for, for people at home. But now, we have bursaries, we have uh, access to, to almost everything. And if you choose a field that you want to work in for the rest of your life, I suggest that you choose one that you're passionate about. And if science is your passion and you work hard for, for it, it, it should benefit you. There are, of course, stereotypes that, uh, that in particular against physics, that it is a difficult subject. Yeah? In, the, in particular, in the first years of the studies of physics, are the toughest one because you have to learn the mathematics, you have to learn the physics, you have to learn the theory, you have to learn to use computers. You have, uh, the, the, the good point is, however, that once you've been through this training, yeah, you're very good. <laughs> One of the things that we are developing is a quantum key distribution system. Yeah? And this, uh, this system has two main components. Yeah? One is a source for single photons, and at the other end you need a detector for single photons. Those are the two most expensive and delicate components in the, in the system. Yeah? And, and Charles, uh, during his master thesis, he designed a single photon source, and now during his PhD thesis, he's designing and building a single photon detector. Will you tell us what you are trying to do here? Cool atoms and slow atoms, and, and so we are using lasers to cool a uh, small cloud of atoms to accept them. Uh, and, and then we can control them in, 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 in a much better way. And hopefully this will lead us to uh, a way to build a quantum computer in the end. And these computers that operate in this quantum world yeah, will be able to solve certain classes of problems much, much better than, than your laptop. Yeah? And one of the problems that they will be good at is solving the problem of crypto of encryption. So in principle, you can fight the problem of quantum computers putting our security in danger by using quantum cryptography, yeah? which even a quantum computer <laughs> can't crack. Yeah? Why I decided that we had to work towards uh, spinning off a company out of our research, and that is something that we hope to do very soon, yeah? is that to have a model in which students see that they come to the university, they study, get involved in projects, and then have a chance either to be employed by maybe a company that we set up, or maybe leave the university with own ideas and set up their own companies. Yeah? Uh, if people come and study physics through the training that they get, that opens them possibility even outside physics and very interesting possibilities that are also rewarded very well. Yeah?